Peter Waters thinks that if he runs 10 metres of wire up a fibreglass pole, he can make it resonate on 40 metres, 20 metres, 15 and 10 metres without traps and without loading coils. Well, I'm not convinced. Anyway, let's see what he has to say. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk about vertical antennas uh, today. But before I do, just an update. The HF bands seem to be improving. I know we've had some odd days when they haven't been so good. But generally speaking, there is a noticeable improvement now. And there should be, because we're now on the upward swing of the new sunspot cycle. We're about seven or eight months into it, in fact. And we've got around about five years ahead of us when conditions will gradually get better. And this is shown really in sales. We're getting uh, quite a few uh, orders now for new equipment. Um, the IC7300 still sells. It's still a popular radio, and rightly so. Uh, the FT991A, uh, which covers all bands from 160 to 70 SEMs, is a popular choice particularly for newcomers that want a, a station all in one box. And of course the Yaesu FT-DX10 is now on stream and that is attracting quite a bit of attention as well. Kenwood, well <laughs> we won't mention Kenwood at the moment. Uh, uh, the uh, Kenwood brand seems to be a bit of a mystery at the moment. Uh, there were promises made last year of uh, new products but we haven't seen anything yet. Anyway, we must be be grateful that Yesu and Icon are uh, in there with some very strong products indeed. So let's get back to the um, antennas. I've done I think, several videos actually where I've mentioned the spider beams, spider pole, the fiberglass poles. Uh, the most popular one seems to be the 12 meter one because it will go up to 40 feet. And if you want to support anything at the top like a ballon, then you can miss out the top section, which gives you a slightly thicker um, next section down, if you like. But the big attraction, I think, for the spider pole is um, its construction. It's very strong, very well made. You know, you can buy cheaper fiberglass telescopic masks, but I'm afraid that... Uh, the price does tend to dictate the quality you're going to get and we tend to stick with the German uh, spider beams, uh, spider poles, because they are very well made, um, they're very rugged and they will certainly last uh, a long time. And of course the attraction for the 12 metre length is that it will easily support a quarter wave on 40 metres. And a quarter wave on 40 metres will give very good performance. It's a full size vertical antenna. Now, if you've got a small garden, don't worry, because you can still operate a vertical antenna in a small garden. I sometimes get uh, um, inquiries about, I want a vertical antenna without radials. Well, yes, um, that's a nice idea. And in fact, it does work. I know, shock horror. But in fact, you can operate a vertical antenna without radials, but you do need a, an earth. What I normally recommend is get a couple of um, lengths of copper pipe and bang it into the earth and use that as your earth connection. Now, it's not as good as having radials, but it does work. And if you can't get radials out, don't let that put you off a vertical antenna. And when it comes to radials, um, I think I've probably mentioned this in the past, that it's not so much the length of the radials, it's more the number. You can actually operate a 40 meter vertical with radials, radials as short as about three meters long. If you put a number of three meter long radials on the ground or dig them into the It will also line, work on 15 meters. So don't let the fact that you can't put longer radials out put you off. It does work and it works surprisingly well. Now the interesting thing about a 40 meter vertical is that it will also work on the third harmonic. 
It will also work on 15 meters. And so if you put up a, a 30 foot, uh, well, I must, must, I must talk in meters. Now. If you put up a 10 meter vertical, 10 meter length that is, which is resonant on 40 meters, it will also work on 15 meters. Now, it's not a perfect match, but it does work. And the internal antenna tuner of your transceiver will certainly match it. The loss will be pretty minimal really. So a 40 meter antenna will work on its third harmonic. So let's just put the picture up on the screen there. You can see um, the picture of this vertical. Um, it's very easy to, to, to build. You get your fiberglass pole and you run a length of uh, flex up the uh, side of the pole. You need to adjust it so you get minimum SWR. You connect your coax cable at the bottom and you're there. Now, I would encourage you to put a, um, a line isolator um, at the base of the antenna because it makes it much more docile and as I've said before you get meaningful VSWR readings. Ideally you want a line isolator at the feed point and a line isolator back at the shack end. You can make a line isolator quite easily um, with a, if you call the, the Carex feeder up. If you put around about, I know, um, I would say about 12 or 14 turns of coax cable on a former around about uh, three inches diameter that will work as a line isolator and it can be part of the the coax feed so it's, it's a very simple thing to make if you've got um, large ferrite cores like a two and a half inch core then you can wind three or four or five turns of the coax around the perimeter of the ferrite core and that will also work equally well as a line isolator. More turns, in fact, if you get about eight turns, it's probably going to be, be great for uh, 40 meters. And it will also act, of course, as a line isolator on uh, 15 meters. So your vertical antenna, which is 10 meters long, give or take, is a dual band antenna, which will cover 40 and 15 meters. Now the problem is, of course, that 15 meters is not always open at the moment. Wouldn't it be nice if we could operate that antenna on 20 meters? Well, in fact, you can. Let me explain. I've spoken before about N-fed half waves, and the 10 meter length of um, element, wire element that you've got up at your, your, the side of your fiberglass pole can actually work as an end-fed half-wave on 20 meters. And all you need is a transformer, uh, 49 to one transformer at the base to feed it. Now I have um, published a video on how to build your own end-fed half-wave transformer and I'll put a link at the bottom of this video to that, to that video. Uh, it's, it's something you can make yourself. You need a soldering iron, you need a bit of wire, and you need a two and a half inch toroid core, core with 43 type material, but it's very easy to make. So if you feed that vertical via that transformer, it resonates on 20 meters. There's also another bonus. That antenna, which resonates on 20 meters, will also resonate on 10 meters because it's two half waves long on 10 meters. So that antenna using the NFED half wave transformer will resonate on 20 meters and 10 meters. Yeah, we're making some progress, but there's more. If you could install a switch at the base of the antenna, you can make that antenna cover 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters and 10 meters. Now, I haven't actually constructed one. This is more a project for the coming sunny days and the longer uh, daylight days we're getting. I've put a drawing up on the screen here and you can see basically the concept. You need a transformer, 49 to 1 transformer, and you need a switch. 
Now, it's up to you how you work this all out. Obviously, if you have a switch, it's got to be waterproof or put into a waterproof box. But it's not beyond the wits of man to produce something at the base of the antenna which will enable you to switch the transformer in and out of circuit. And as I said, you end up with a four band HF vertical. There's no loading coils, there's no traps, and on all bands, the whole of that antenna radiates. All you need is a fiberglass pole, a length of flex, some coax feed, a couple of copper stakes for your earth, uh, better still, radials, and you're switching your transformer and you're there. It's a good project for the summer or spring. So think it through. There's a project for you to uh, think about. Um, it's a very practical project. You don't need a large garden and you should get some interesting results. So I hope that's uh, been a useful um, uh, video and uh, give you some ideas for projects. Um, as always, I'd like to thank you for the custom um, at our uh, premises down at Portsmouth. Uh, they really do work hard down there, getting all the orders out. And um, as I said at the beginning of this video, we have noticed a significant improvement um, or inc no, improvement, increase in um, uh, sales for the HF bands. VHF is still popular, of course. And as I said in the previous video, don't forget that we've got the Spradic E period coming up. That will start possibly towards the end of next month and it will last for about three months and it will give you some spectacular contact contacts on six meters four meters hopefully a little bit on two meters but it's the four meter and six meter bands which are the real surprises and the real exciting bands and also 10 meters will be affected as well so think about antennas that you might need and plan ahead you should have some interesting times so in the meantime, thanks very much for watching this video. Um, appreciate the subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please, please press the subscribe button. And uh, we'll all meet again very soon. In the meantime, take care. Enjoy our radio.